Hello everyone. Greetings of the day. Dr. Anthony here welcoming you all for this technical webinar on behalf of SCADSET Mechanical. SCAD College of Engineering and Technology is a 20-year-old institution a yan good reputation in this region. We believe in multi-perspective development. In connection with this, to bridge the gap between industrial requirement and academia, we are providing skill training to all students right from first year. We have developed year-wise framework for all the skill sets to be offered to our students, keeping in mind the job positions they are going to acquire in future. As an outcome, we have reached 90% placement this year. With a short note about our institution, I take this opportunity to introduce our resource person, Dr. Shantakumar Mohan. He got his PhD in Robotics and Control from IIT Madras in 2010. From 2010 to 2011, that's from June 2010 to June, March 2011, he worked as an assistant professor in Department of Mechanical Engineering at National Institute of Technology, Calicut. He then worked as world-class university postdoctoral fellow at Korean Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, Dijon, Korea. In addition to this, he received another prestigious Brain Korea 21, that is BK21, postdoctoral fellowship with the same institute from September 2011 to March 2012. In 2012, he joined the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering at IIT Indore. He is holding the visiting faculty positions at IAC Bangalore, RWTH HN Germany, and ECN France. His active research areas include underwater vehicle and underwater manipulator design and control, parallel robotic platforms, assistive robots, field and service robots intelligent motion control, dynamic modeling and control of dynamic systems. Furthermore, he has received the Outstanding Young Scientist for the year 2014 from Korea Robotics Society, then European Master on Advanced Robotics Plus Fellowship by 2018-19 and Alexander Von Humboldt Fellowship by 2016-17. and 17. He has published more than 100 articles in various journals and conference proceedings. He has worked in many funded projects and he is having three patents under his belt and one got published now. So we are so fortunate to have such an eminent personality amidst us. So with no further delay, I hand over the platform to Dr. Shantakumar. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, I think it's a very long introduction. I don't require that much uh, long, uh, lengthy introduction. Because uh, I was actually wondering this one hour I could fit uh, how much uh, in one semester course. It's a one full semester course, which is what we call wheeled mobile robots. So the slide uh, first, or you can say the introduction itself, you can feel it, it's an introduction. So obviously what I'm trying to give here is more like uh, a flavor of wheeled mobile robots. Uh, what are the basic things need to be done and how that would be associated in industry challenge or probably if you towards going to an industrial automation, what are the challenges and how actually like one can actually start a mobile robot as a research career. This is what the overall uh, content which I am planning. So if that is continue, uh, the very first slide which I want to mention since it's everything is online. So I want to mention one thing is this presentation is actually like prepared wide range of resources. If it is a single probably article or probably couple of article, then I can put it in the reference. But it is more like uh, several of books, web pages and research article which I referred. Probably some of them might be mine, my own and uh, many of them may come from outside. So I want to actually like keep this is uh, intention or uh, intention to do only pure educational purpose. So obviously, please don't share this presentation or this video for any commercial purpose. So with that note, I just start this particular, uh, you can say, uh, you can say the talk, which mean to say one hour, probably I may exceed. If I exceed somebody from the, you call moderating team, please remind me because the talk may go in a different flow, then you please remind me. So if I start the topic, the topic is wheeled mobile robot, it's very specific. So you all can understand the mobile robot, which will be ran from wheeled, definitely that is the case. But what I thought actually like before putting into wheeled mobile robot, I want to give a flavor. 
so why and what all those aspects will come and how that would be go across and what are the building blocks all those things will come and at the end so i would be sharing what are the research challenge put forward in general uh, robotics and in specific what are the challenges put forward in terms of uh, you can say or uh, in front of wheeled mobile robots if that is the case uh, without any further delay i will start the main topic so i am actually like one kind of uh, you can say mechanical engineer i don't want to give a different definitions or different types i start with a very basic idea what is a robot and what are the types so we always actually like consider anything which is actually like affecting that is what we call effector here it would be more on you can say robotic device so here the effector is nothing but a, any robot or robotic device that has an effect on the environment so now if you see the effect on the environment that effect on the environment can cause two kind of you can say general scenario so one can actually like cause the effect can cause motion it uh, can say on the system itself or effector itself that is what we are actually like going to see in this talk the other one is the effect on the environment can cause motion or probably uh, you can say effect on the surrounding object or object around if that is the case then the first one is very clear so we all know that if the effect on the environment causes motion of the effector itself then it is called locomotion very simple example you take the broad topic which we are going to see is wheeled mobile robot now the wheeled mobile robot would be having a chassis and the wheel now the wheel which is actually going to generate a effect on the environment which is nothing but a ground so now the ground what it is actually like going to get that effect because of that effect so the body of the chassis or body of the robot is start moving that's what we call locomotion so anything which is come under locomotion which is what we call robotic device hereafter we call mobile robot now the contradict topic or probably contradiction with the locomotion is so it cause motion of the object around so which is what we call manipulation so now you got a clarity what is manipulation and what is locomotion now uh, in olden days it is slightly different but now whatever we call robot that is nothing but mobile robot in probably 70s 80s where the robot started even in 90s anything we call robot we imagine probably a robotic arm but now it is not at all like that so anything we call robot which is nothing but a locomotive device now with this definition you all might be knowing what is manipulation and what is locomotion so now uh, in the current perspective we'll go further even little bit so if the effector is actually like going to connect with the controller then what would be the controller role so the controller uh, role would be very simple so it would actually like provide the desired effect what you want to give it to the environment it can be manipulator then the manipulator means the motor which is connected with the uh, joint that supposed to provide a sufficient torque or sufficient angular rotation if it is actually like a mobile robot then the motor supposed to generate a sufficient traction force in the form of motor torque or probably angular velocity so now this is very clear so in to, in order to make the controller in a broader specter or broader spectrum we will come back right now we'll go further what is manipulators and mobile robot if you see the slide previous slide i mentioned it's a robotic manipulator but when i come here it is simply manipulator that's what the whole idea so the robotic term is no longer uh, really required for manipulators because it's more on mechanical device so that's what we are bothering so if i say that way there is a broad you can say aspect you can one can see one is operating in a constrained workspace why the manipulator would be fixed and it would be manipulating object around so then what we can actually get advantage there would be you can say it is a constrained workspace then we have advantage that we really no need to actually like talk about the environment as long if it is a fixed cell but when we think about the mobile robot it is definitely a locomotive device or it is having a locomotion then it can operate anywhere then the environment really need not to be constrained even we constrain then that is within the room then you cannot actually like predict several of things so if that is the case the mobile robot is always challenging in several aspect that we will be discussing over uh, you can say pass through this course or pass this uh, talk but right now what i want to say here the external sensing is actually like very much important to determine the position or to understand the environment or understand the environment in the sense so to avoid obstacle or probably to accomplish the task so if that is the case then what the current scenario people can think about 
So now what we have, this is a fixed base and this is a mobile base. So somebody can think about, take this and put it on the stock. So this is what the, uh, you can say beauty of this, where you will get both pros and cons, which is what we call mobile manipulation in the uh, aspect of motion. But what in terms of device, it is a mobile manipulator in specific, what we want to say here is it's a vehicle manipulator system. So we will discuss this in detail if we have a time, but right now what we are interested, so the wheeled mobile robot. So now anyone can think about a mobile robot before that, I just want to give the robotics themes or you can say the current focus, how it is actually divided into two broader way. So one side uh, probably I can actually like add one more thing. Since I come across few of the Eastern countries, few of the Western countries, I've seen how the people work around there and here how the robotic research is going on in each and every country which I travel. Then from there, I come across two broader themes. One is actually like related to the domestic application, what we call, but uh, what I want to say here. So in India, we always proudly say that we have youth population high at this moment. But now imagine 10 years down the line, probably 20 years down the line. So lots of youth would be become middle age or elderly people. So then what we will have one, what we will have in further years, it would be much more than the current. Already we have two, what we have probably husband and wife, even if we have a kid, that's what we call joint family. Imagine down the line, 10 years down the line. So probably one or two would be there. They call actually like a family or joint family. If that is the case, imagine one who's standing or sitting outside uh, from his family, he required definitely some kind of companion. So indirectly, I can say that the humanity need to be focused. So most of the Western countries, at least I can say, uh, including Japan, although it is in Eastern developed countries, already this kind of scenario has come. So that's why if you see uh, several of news articles, people say that just dog robot or simply feeling robot, smiling robot, all those things. So this is all we have come across one case where in order to enhance the humanity. So this is one theme. The other theme is actually to increase the productivity of the in industrial environment. So one is actually towards money, one is towards human being. So in that sense, what the current broader theme, which is most of the robotic research is working on, one is thinking about human friendly, which is what we call companion robot. The other one, what we think about is probably smart robot, which is what we call smart industrial robot. In specific, we call the smart is nothing but it is you can connect a data cloud or probably a cloud, then it is a smart. But right now, what I mean to say here, smart is probably intelligence. That's what autonomous robot. So now this is what the two broader theme. So and this particular talk would be focusing more on the industrial aspect because the human friendly is not really all the time come with wheel because some cases actually like we need to think about the nature or probably the locomotion come from the inspired from the nature then it is supposed to be left so that's what we are actually like thinking about but right now if this is the too broader theme then there are lots of challenges will come and lots of you can say ideas come so when we think about ideas generation or probably when we think about some kind of you can say proposed research so one can definitely think about when and where to use robots because india uh, like country like india we have huge human or you can say manpower then actually like really robot should not take away their job right so then one can definitely address what's supposed to be the robot uh, implementation or where to be the robot implementation when and where so if i see in the history or probably in the uh, you can say literature then i found that one of the easiest way to find is the d's so d's so initially it started with 3d's where the traditional robot implementation happened when the environment is done indirectly a routine task so much of fatic work, then people think about, yes, yes, it is, you see the man who's actually doing probably in a day, eight hour shift is doing the same job again and again. Why can't we think about mechanization? So then the mechanization become actually like robot later on. So then the other environment where the dirty, for example, if you think about a washroom of probably an industrial uh, place, it is definitely would be a so much of dirty if you are not cleaning even 30 minutes or 40 minutes. So then if that is the case, the environment is dirty. Some point of time, the robot is thought about the third D where the job is capable of doing by a human being, but it is dangerous for him. Then what we can think, we can think about a dangerous task that also can be fulfilled in terms of 3D robotics. 
but this is not really worth when the robot uh, industry keep growing people think no no this is not the only three we can think about people think about you you see uh, for example a uh, human being is able to lift 200 kg probably you can think is carrying one or two occasions still it is possible right but if we think about that is in other perspective it is difficult so then the conventional 4d which is traditional and conventional nothing different so i put it only the keyword just to add the 43 why it has come because the robotic uh, industry feel it if i keep only 3d i cannot survive then they say you even you have any difficult task which cannot be performed by human being very easily i can made it so then the conventional 4d has come so then people think about oh this 4d is still a lot of actually like effort so then the industry or you call i i did not say the illuminati but i said that most of the stakeholder which is coming from the you call uh, business model they felt no no this is not the one i supposed to do because i need to think about increasing the profit then what they added a term called dear so we all feel dear means oh god it is supposed to be close to me no no it is not like that it is very traditional dear to the industry perspective what dear means dear means whichever is giving economical benefit or probably you call improving the uh, profit that's what they call dear if some of the industry or some of the business sector they call dear employee then they think that you are actually like producing or providing some kind of economical benefit to them when they say simply employee then you are not doing anything that's what the meaning so please don't mistake that the dear means it is close to us but uh, in the modern trend we can think yeah it is probably a companion that's why they call dear but the original definition from the industry or you can say international federation on robot is the dear is slightly different okay then what the current trend current trend is no longer stick with 4d so they thought at the dear and uh, difficult all come in first three task dull dirty dangerous okay then what we can add so we can add the robots which is in the current perspective which is no longer sticking with the industry why can't we think about adding into a one more d uh, domestic application where the human is not able to do yeah whatever that that can be done yes so then what the fourth d brought into additional thing uh, because the nature is always actually like giving so lots of actually like additional benefit then people thought about with that direction okay why can't we add a dexterness so like what i said the uh, mobile and uh, you can say manipulation all together they gave a mobile manipulation right so now the mobile manipulation will give lots of flexibility that flexibility only we call dexterness here so probably the detail we will discuss during the questionnaire session right now what we have seen that when to uh, are bad to use the robots and what are the broad classification so with that what we are actually going ahead in our course or probably our talk which is nothing but mobile robot i will start so we already know that mobile robot is nothing but an effector which is capable of having a locomotion itself that's what we are thinking about but what we added as a definition from the probably standard cook up uh, definition which says that it is automatic machine but uh, there are several other definition also will come into you can say our perspective which says that capability to move around i don't feel any difference capable of locomotion or capability to move around but what the main idea is actually like the uh, base which is what we call chassis which is actually like not fixed that is a bigger thing so if that is the case the mobile robot can cover or robotics can cover a broad spectrum of robots which can actually like come with roll or walk or fly or swim but what this particular talk is actually like going to restrict only with roll motion so even the walk is not allowed in this particular talk that's what the idea behind so if that is the case then definitely what uh, actually like three fundamental question which i took it from one of the popular book what we call uh, introduction to autonomous mobile robot where we call actually like where i am and uh, probably where am i going and how do i get there just to understand this question i'll just give an example you imagine i am from korea i know i speak only korean uh, probably a bit of english which i can read rather than you can speak so unfortunately or fortunately i supposed to go to iit madras from korea probably i am coming from korea to attend one of the conference in iit madras so fortunately i had accommodation in iit madras so what happened when i land at you can say chennai airport from incheon airport so when i come out some you can say probably bad gundas so they actually like took me and blindfold me and took their car put it in their car and took me somewhere around probably kathipura junction 
so they just throw me out and they just rush out so imagine if i am actually like uh, once it's robot if i unfold my blindfold or probably if i actually like open my eyes so what i will get nothing right so i would be put it in a completely a different environment where i never ac- come across i don't know how to speak so if i able to speak at least i can actually like convey okay this is what uh, i need to go somehow i came here so i need to think so then where am i how i will actually like answer it so if you see even people like us if we go abroad what we used to do first of all we will understand the location where we are going and we try to identify some of the landmarks and we keep in our mind oh these are the landmarks if i go here by road i can see this from there i can take left turn right turn like that right so the same way if i actually like come across from airport if i take a road i will see first probably the uh, metro station after that i will see the probably a suburban station along with the flyover which is top of my head then if i keep continue then i will get one more probably a bigger uh, station then followed by i can see that there is one big you can say bridge which i call katibara okay so now if that is the case if i keep all landmarks what i will get if i unfold my you can say blindness then what i will see over this katipara i know yeah so this landmark i already come across okay if i know this then what i have i already localize myself close to the katipara junction now from there what i will take i will take okay now i still continue to gindi then i take right turn then i will go to probably uh, you can say uh, governor uh, bangalow then i will get to to iit madras that's all it is easy right so that's what the you can say answer but the robot is not a like human being like us right so obviously we need to feed lots of data and lots of knowledge to that that's what the three fundamental questions will answer so if that is the case what we need to think about so there are several question to be answer or probably need to be uh, you can say no by the robot i put the four of the major thing one is actually like it should make the measurements so that based on the measurement it can model for example if i assume the robot i am the robot then i can see that i have a vision i have touched several of sensing i can actually like feel it where i am and all but the robot doesn't know right so obviously i need to make measurement based on the measurement i have to model the environment around once the environment is around if i have a sample landmarks or probably i can train myself then localize myself so if all this then then only i can think about reaching the goal for that i need to have a plan so along with that i need to control my motion so this is a bigger task right so now for accomplishing this bigger task what would be coming into our own mind so there are four sub sections which i call four pillars or four verticals one is actually like about the device so which is i call the mechanical component and mechanical actuation so which is the mechanical hull of the mobile robot that is one bigger case where you need to think about whether the structure is stable or the required motion can be achievable all those aspects okay for example if i want to move in lateral direction i cannot do a car like robot so that all aspect i need to think so now i need to take a payload of 10 kg i need to think about different actuation if i need to take a payload of 100 kg definitely i need to think of different way so these all need to be covered in one particular sub section what we call mechanical design and actuation but the other three sub section is very broad because the mechanical design and actuation is little more you call matured at this point of time because it started probably 1960 and it is slowly improving improving now probably like people like me if i say mechanical design of robots people look around they feel a hey, come on you are probably very outdated guy so what if you see the other side where the sensing perception and navigation is one of the big deal what is the difference between sensing sensing would be a raw data probably i am seeing in my eye i'll be getting a image right it's a raw data which will be giving a number of pixel but i cannot do that so i have to perceive from that okay i am looking at the laptop that laptop has probably slide that slide is having a sub section you can see these are the letters i can read like that that perception need to be that then based on these things i can actually like do two things one is i can localize myself based on the measurement related to the state so the other one i can actually like uh, you can say uh, map i can build which is actually like around me then what i will get i will get the work environment and you can say my own state so then what i can do i can actually do a navigation so we'll come back what navigation all about 
so if i want to add some kind of emphasis here you all might have come across grand prix race at least i can say formula 1 2 and all so even if the driver is alone driving for example formula 1 or formula 2 or formula upgraded one where there is a driver and co-driver would be there so now imagine this driver always wearing a mic and headphone and this guy will be getting instruction from somebody who's next to him or probably outside who's this so this guy what we call navigator what this navigator will do this navigator will actually like read the map read the situation and he will actually like give all the instruction to the driver the driver is after all a feedback element in other aspect but he is actually like respondent to the navigator the navigator will say hey you see next to you there is one guy who is trying to overtake you please rise your you can say you please put your pedal probably accelerate more or you have a get of one right turn which is very sharp you have to slow down or you see somebody actually like hit in the uh, probably bump and they are actually like obstructing the motion you please stop otherwise you will also end up with an accident so these kind of navigational aspect would be given in the navigator that's why when you see in the end of the race everyone would be equal in the team so for example the team consists of four member all would be treated as same so this is what the navigator aspect the same direction the navigation will give all localization and you call the map information so now based on that what the driver or the other guy will do he will make the guidance system in fact the navigator can extend some kind of guidance which is actually like uh, probably a path or something but what the motion planning is slightly different for example, the navigator can say you take right, but when to start that, the driver only can do. So that's what we know. Like he knows that how much the, you can say the steering rotation can be possible and how much acceleration is possible. All those restrictions would be imposed on the, you can say path planning. That's what we call motion plan. But what the final idea is actually like how to control that defined motion. You have planned the motion, but how will you follow that? So you need some kind of closed loop network, right? So for that is what the driver would always watch and see, sense, and then do it. So the same way, the final one is task execution, which is along with the motion control and task execution. So these are the four pillars. And I hope within next 40 minutes, I try to cover most of them and try to give some kind of flavor to you. So if that is the continuation, what I want to emphasize here, so I already said the mechanical part is more or less you can say saturated so what actually like the current trend is going on in the you can say three pillars the guidance motion planning and motion control and navigational aspect so these two are most predominantly taken by we call cs people because uh, you can say the guidance and motion planning most likely it's algorithm based but what this uh, this side is actually like more on electrical and computer science side but this is actually like more on open to everyone in fact motion control is common to a mechanical electrical or computer science engineer so in that sense what the trend says the robotic research the trend initially said when the robot or robotics started which is actually like we call classical cycle where our forefathers or probably our grand grandfathers all are very well actually like good engineers i can say skilled engineers uh, what that skilled engineer will give they will make everything perfect so in that sense, what happened, the classical robotics actually purely depend on the system. So they assume that everything is in perfect manner. So in that sense, what happened, you will be having a perfect, accurate models. So once you have exact model, what we need, you can just pre-program, no need to think about a closed loop. It is like an open loop with the feet forward. So then what the classical robotics are all about, it is only exact model and no sensing. For example, I want to pick up my phone Probably I assume that the phone weight is exactly under gram. My arm is from here to here. I properly plan and take it just like predefined task. But this is not going to help, right? So obviously, uh, probably up to 80, there is not big deal happened in classical robotics. It is, in fact, I should say it is most like, like mechanized or probably automated system. Then what happened, the three term control, which we call PID control, proportional integral and derivative control has come that time, everybody was actually like jump into a feedback system. So indirectly what happened, the model based, what we call classical robotics gone and people think about motion based. Hey, you stupid, I, I can make any system, but I can just take a feedback and can do it. So this is what the reactive paradigm has come. 
where there is no model required, but what they actually like make it, so they heavily depend on the sensing system. But we know the sensors are not really good. Probably the manipulator part, these all worked well, but when they think about mobile robot, this was actually paid. And what people thought, oh God, this is not really going to help. If I think about only DC motor, this reactive paradigm is good, but I cannot work for mobile robot or the system level. Then what people thought, okay, the classical side is exact model and reactive side exact, probably good sensing. Why can we combine? This is what the hybrid paradigm have come in probably 90s and all. Then what they made, they integrate both. So what integration does that too, like they made it in two level where the actuator level, what we call lower control or low level control, the actuator would be purely depend on the sensing. But what on the top, for example, you take a manipulator, the manipulator individual joint rotation would be purely depend on the, you call feedback, but the group of joints or group of body, which is going to accomplish the task that would be controlled by the model base. So in that sense, what happened, the error accumulation on the end would be minimized. Some of partial information from the model can be used. But again, the model based control can fail. For example, I assume that my body is going to lift probably 10 kg. Somehow I assume that it is actually like some hole on the sack which is carrying, it is keep on, you can say falling. Then what happened? My actuation supposed to give for 10 kg, but I'm not having 10 kg. So then what happened? It would actually like fail. That's what happened. Then people thought about very much in detail. Then slowly some other direction have come. That time the probability theory was very good because that time the computers have start coming up very good in manner. Then probabilistic robotics have come. So what they have done, they have done nothing. They just integrated two things. What they integrated, they seamlessly integrated model and sensing. So in that sense, you know, need to have accurate model and accurate sensing as such. So that's what we are actually thinking about, which is what probabilistic robotics. So even now, most of the mobile robots depending on probabilistic robot. So for example, if you have INS, which is depend on the extended Kalman filter, extended Kalman filter is nothing but probabilistic based, you can say filtering scheme. So if that is the case, we are actually like happy, but what happened? So we, have, we are seeing that why can't we think about the behavior base? So these are all actually like more or less classical cycle, but classical cycle won't work well with the modern robotics, specifically the outdoor environment or probably mobile robot. And people talk about, talk about, okay, why can't we use a knowledge which is we have it? So which is not new. In fact, it is, uh, it is available. It was available in 90s. If you see several of development which happened in Japan, they come up with neural network or probably knowledge based robot. What that means, most of the Japanese robot is robot engineers. So they never bother about the mathematical model. They just start develop the robot and they refine based on the experience. So that's why the robotics have come very, very fast in Japan. But if you see the converse in the Eastern to Western, Western people are more rigid. They do first computationally verified, then only they go computationally or mathematically verified, then only they go for fabrication. So in that sense, the learning is not really happened that time. It's more on database. It is something like you have a huge set of data based on that you evolve the system. But the learning base, what I mentioned in the slide is slightly different. Of course, it is data driven. What the additional thing is we have come across in uh, mid of 2010, we have several of advancement happened in the computer science environment. What really happened in the deep learning and reinforcement learning that brought a learning base is the one of the key in robotic research. So if you see in the recent uh, conferences, at least I would say the ICRA and IROS, which is the popular conference in robotics, they all actually concentrate learning base is one of the theme. Now, if I actually like write any paper in classical or probably hybrid, they just throw my paper out. Hey, come on, you people are outdated. We are thinking about mod and where it is all A based techniques. But of course, the industry is not such, you can say, fast growing like, like a conference people still thinking about only what we call the classical or hybrid cycle. So that is what the case. And uh, some questions probably I would pose later on. Uh, so why PI is not uh, coming into a picture when we think about mobile robot or we call robotic manipulator than PD control that we will discuss at the end. I just opened this question. So in that sense, if we continue, what is mobile robot? Mobile robot is nothing but 
it is ability to move around. But what I want to mention here in this slide again emphasize uh, apart from the ability, so you can see that the fixed base mobile or fixed base manipulators that are actually typically programmed. In, a, in fact, it is actually like really not required any kind of closed loop control if as long the environment is actually predefined. In fact, most of the robotic manipulator environment is very much fixed. If you see the automobile sector where there are several of manipulators hanging around, you can see that it's all predefined. In fact, very low level, the control coming into picture. So it's all based on the sequence and the limit switches are probably limiters. So once the chassis comes at this particular location, you just probably spray your paint or weld your probably joints on top. But what the mobile robot is not really typically what you call structure. It is less structured or most of the cases it is unstructured. Then what we have the problem is you need to understand the system, right? Both the state and as well as environment. Then we need more sensor. Apart from that, the sensing what we are going to talk in later on. So there are several challenges in the mobile robot sensors. So with that, what I want to say here, the mobile robot will have definitely four major components if you call mobile robot. If you call only probably a device, which is just probably joystick operated or probably app operator, these many components may not be there. But when you call mobile robot, there are definitely four components. One component, definitely your mechanical structure, that is what I call locomotion system. But what are the other three ones supposed to be make it for closed loop and understand the environment to accomplish the task? So you need a sensing system. So once you have sensing, that sensing is not alone enough. And even you build a map, you need to have a reasoning. For example, I assume that I put you in a probably a cricket ground. What you will understand that. So even your mobile robot will circulate, everything look like same for that. Then you need to think about some kind of reasoning, right? So that kind of additional component need to be done. Then finally, the mobile robot already, I said it is a mobile device. So you need to communicate, either you want to communicate through wire or probably uh, you call a remote, a remote basis, which can be IR or probably you can think about Wi-Fi or GSM or something. So obviously you should have some kind of communication mode. I'm not talking about the, you call controller and all those things because that all integral part in some kind of things, okay? So with that, at least the four components or four subsystems supposed to be there in the mobile robot, that is what we discuss now. Now, since I said these are the components, several of us would have an issue. So mobile robot is different and autonomous mobile robot is completely different. What that means, the autonomous giving another, you can say additional idea, which is capable of navigating an uncontrolled environment without need of, without need of any physical intervention. That's what I want to say. So that we call autonomous, some people call intelligent. Intelligent is one step ahead, which is actually like completely different. So this autonomous, even you can feed some kind of, you can say knowledge based on that it can do it. But intelligence supposed to be evolve its own. That's what we are actually like missing here. So the autonomous mobile robot is one thing. So definitely when we think about autonomous mobile robot, several of us will get some kind of, you can say, uh, con or you can say contradict robot or robotic device, which is what we call automated guided vehicle. Automated guided vehicle really not new. It is it is available probably since probably 80. But what the difference here is actually like AGV, what we simply call it is having a set of guidance device that allow to travel a predefined navigation route. So even obstacle comes, it will stop and go. But it is not really autonomous. So autonomous, even if I kick out from the path and it will come back to the path. But this predefined navigation, which is used in AGV, conventional AGVs will not come in this way. It will follow a line or it will follow the beacon, uh, you can say system in certain way and it will reach the desired locations and come back. This is what we do. So if that is the case, definitely one can think about what is the major difference. One difference is actually like one is fixed route, the other one is intelligent navigation. If that is the case, what we have additional thing. So AMR will have a high flexibility because it is having an intelligent navigation system. But AGV in the contrast, it has a fixed, so it is actually like kind of orthodox. So if it is orthodox, what happened? It would be having a limited availability or limited application point of thing. Then it is a few application, but you have high flexible in nature, so you can apply. For example, you have a car manufacturing industry, which has probably earlier days, it's just a manipulator. Now imagine four or five mobile robot, which is actually like covering this. 
now you change instead of car you are thinking about jeep still the same cell can be reformulated with the help of mobile manipulators so that is what we are actually thinking about so now if that is the case what happened so the agv is well suited for the traditional business model where you keep on producing same kind of routine products but when you think about fast growing nature in the current modern world so the agile business is required then people think about amr rather than agv so that's why if you see the warehouse automation people earlier days thought about agvs now people see about amr as the best option so if that is the case people always it's a myth to say that amr is always cost expensive system but really when people like us we did in a survey and we did a qualitative and quantitative study we found that agv is very expensive than the amr system so the example which i show, shown here it's one of the fetch robot and this is actually like one kind of agv system which is implemented in a kind of aros where holden is so now that is the continuation we can actually think about the mobile robot i already said it can be classified in several form so one form which we are going to concentrate is land based even in the land based it is actually like based on the locomotion we can further classify it based on several things but before that i just want to give a biological locomotion mechanism and unfortunately we are not going to use any of the biological you can say locomotion system why there are several challenges so what is the easiest one is actually like the we call invention of our now you can say artificial locomotion which is nothing but rolling the invention of wheel gave a lot of advantage for us so then what we are thinking about so how to choose the locomotion so definitely we need to think about the issues so there are three key issues which we need to focus which is nothing but stability when you think about like the robot then the stability is one of the critical concern than the mobile robot so what is that case when we think about stability we need to think about several things but what i want to say here is two aspect one is number of contact points so for any system supposed to be stable we should have minimum three contact which will make a plane you know so you can say case then it would be stable but when you make even three point contact what we have a problem where the center of gravity fall or whether we are able to do it for example you have a three leg robot which is legged robot or four legged robot still the stability is not assured why because the support reaction only acting upward direction in the three point contact but what happened your gravity which is actually like creating lots of additional thing when the system is start moving so apart from that we need to think about static dynamic stabilization and when we think about the robot which is moving in a rough terrain or inclination of terrain then we need to think so in that sense any mobile robot which has minimum 2 or 3 3 is the best one if you have a 3 so definitely the stability are sure if you have a 2 like a segway then we have to think about how to make the stability okay so if that is the case the stability is not only the concern for the locomotion the characteristic of contact well, for understanding this i will just give additional probably example you think about racing racing is nothing but who is going faster or who is doing fast nas or probably who's come first this is the easiest one but when you see the cycle race the cycle tires are thin but when you see formula car race the tires are with is actually like probably two or three times of the normal car why this kind of contradict thing so both are doing racing and both wants to come fast but why this kind of issue comes this is what i want to understand or i want to give a idea behind characteristic of contact when you think about racing by car the car is supposed to generate the enough traction force to go forward or stop whatever way you want so that time the traction is purely depends on the rolling so the rolling friction and the kinematic friction is playing a role but when you think about the cycle the cycle where the friction should be very much less so that you can actually like make pure rolling but here the pure rolling is not going to help so we need to think about the friction so in order to increase the friction of your case in order to increase or enhance the traction force we keep increase the width of the tire but the same case which is not happen in the tire within the cycle we are thinking about making a disc it's like a disc thin disc but you think about the, the other case it is different so that's what i want to say the area of contact or the contact point makes sense when we think about the characteristic so apart from that what is the angle of contact or what are the friction we are considering all those will come into a picture when we think about locomotion so when we extend definitely the environment also makes sense i cannot actually like make a solid plastic wheel 
an outdoor environment which you would have already noticed when you are dragging you are probably a, a trolley suitcase and you are uh, probably dragging inside airport you feel all oh, comfort very smooth but the same trolley when you are uh, probably dragging on the cement road concrete road or probably a uh, tar road you will feel different now imagine you are dragging that into a probably a mud road completely different right so that's what i want to say the structure or probably the type of environment you need to think since we are talking about wheeled mobile robot these all are very much important if i extend this what are the you can say type of land based which we are discuss already the wheeled legged tracked and high combination of all three or two of them something like that so one of the popular competition what we call darpa robotic challenge so there the guys which uh, the institute i come across they won the first robotic challenge event so what they made it so most of them they tried completely a legged robot but these people did legged and wheeled combined whenever they want they want to fold and come with a tire or a can say wheel base the other one is leg base so that way you can make a hybrid nature but this particular talk is more on focus more focus on wheeled mobile robot so we'll talk more about wheel so already i said wheel means ability to move around with the help of wheels so if that is the case definitely one can definitely argue a land base means we can actually feel the nature is the important one why you are not taking consideration to the nature the wheel is actually like artificial why you are thinking about so for that i have answer that so one of the best system which we wanted to have is uh, autonomous humanoid that is what we are thinking from the beginning of robot but what is the biggest challenge will come is it's a complex type obviously but what the biggest challenge is actually like you need to make the stabilization first and then you have to make it so the last slide of my uh, you can say presentation will give more uh, understandable way uh, in very simple sense right now if i want to address so somebody says to me i want to work in humanoid the first thing i say okay you keep a stick in your palm and make it stay all the time it is not easy right the same way if you think about the humanoid which is having a properly set of bodies which is associated in vertically upward direction indirectly so many inverted pendulums are there but what you can see in this case itself so these two foot which is having a contact area that is the only place where the force can be generated even if you take center of pressure on that then only two vertical force which is acting so these two force need to be accomplish all other stability and motion so which is quite complex right so that's what the idea began that's why even if you see honda simo that will come every task you assign it will come into a standby where you call home position and then it execute so there is a huge discussion we can do it but controversy you can see the land base is very simple anyone who want to do mobile robot research i would recommend the wheeled mobile robot is the best option because it is cheap you can easily realize inside your house and you can do further if anybody wanted to work Uh, robotics that to mobile robotics i say that you first make your own robot with two or three wheel and try to connect with the joystick and try to control the motion that is the easiest way to start that's what the idea here the wheeled mo wheeled mobile robot is popular because of so many reason so apart from that this can be easily deployed in the industry because the industry environment is very much compatible with the wheeled mobile robots so if that is the case i always actually like uh, consider me as probably a dynamics and control guy i just want to give a small flavor on you can say the mathematics behind here so before addressing that i'll just ask one simple question and i will answer here so why we need to think about the mathematical model so there are several things for example even we want to design a simple pendulum so you need to think about what would be the weight of the pendulum so what would be the length of the pendulum these are probably we can give us but what we can additionally say that how to connect the ball or bob of the pendulum to the you can say leg of the pendulum or arm of the pendulum so now the arm we theoretically consider probably massless but when you think about making a prototype you should give a you can say shape now when you give a shape the structure of the you can say arm and structure of the bob should be stable on top of that the connection should be stable now you connect these all with a proper you can say design aspect then you will be connecting with a joint which is going to connect in a wall and that need to be proper r joint then indirectly you need to bring your bearing and your pin joint also should not fail during the motion 
then you think about if it is actually like motorized then the motor should generate enough torque and you want to have probably a statically stable then you have to connect a spec so lots of things are coming these all information who will give obviously somebody has to give from the physics so that physics only we are thinking about here so even the mobile robot one kind of headache or probably one kind of hurdle is not there which is what we call dynamics just to understand the dynamics and kinematics separately in fact dynamics is actually like a broader but mechanical people we call always kinematics and dynamics i'll explain why but right now i just want to give a small example for example i am playing a football i just want to probably pass the ball to my partner or probably i want to shoot the ball into the goal post now during that time really i will actually like see how the ball motion goes or probably my partner is passing my passing a ball i need to go and grab so do you think that whether i will see how much force my partner given to the ball will i actually do it if i make it that will it get sense no right so i will see only the ball motion i will go and grab the similar way i will just hit the ball rather than how much force i need to hit these things are not really necessary right if that is the case if i am seeing only the motion or i am concentrating only study of motion without considering who is creating or how much the force generator or who is causing the motion then it is nothing but kinematics so the kinematics is actually like considering that but when we think about robotics or probably mechanical system the dynamics or kinematics which is actually like come from one kind of subsection because f equal to ma where the a is acceleration the a is actually like no longer you can say keep it completely kinematics because the a is derived from the kinematic so that's why people actually like in mechanical we simply call kinematics is subsection and dynamics is another subsection okay but when you see the physics kinematics and kinematics are two subsections of dynamics okay so now with that what i want to mention here so you think about the other aspect for example i am taking a ball and i am giving probably 10 newton as the force on the ball now the ball is rolling so now the ball is actually rolling due to the initial you can say uh, initial force which is generated so obviously the inertia will arrest so ma will generate but on top of the motion is generated so i want to follow now you imagine that ball is inside water somehow so i you imagine it's a steel ball and i am actually like probably swimming in the underneath and i am hitting it so now the ball is rolled and during the roll there is a viscous friction generated so now the velocity also coming now imagine that the ball is connected one end with the spring so now what happened the spring will generate the you call restoring force so now if i consider the f i cannot write strictly f equal to ma it's supposed to return as f equal to ma plus or probably i call the viscous coefficient as b b v plus k i assume the spring stiffness then k into x so now in order to make it very simple so i call v is x dot and a is x double dot now i can rewrite the equation is the capital f is simple function of uh, x x dot and x double dot now you can see that there are two subsections are coming one side which is your input which is you call f capital f the other side is function which is consist of x dot x double x double dot and x which is nothing but the motion variable now you need to map these two this mapping if i do in you can say this perspective this is nothing but dynamics but what i am going to do the subsection what i am thinking about the you call only motion that is what they are going to deal so if that is the case what we are thinking about the geometrical relationship that govern the system and on top of that can i actually like make a relationship which can actually like make it controlling in terms of state space so that is what we are actually like trying to do i'll discuss more detail in later slides but when we think of it now mathematical model definitely one can ask what is the need so there are three broad needs i put it one is to understand and additionally we can design the mechanical system but i mentioned the design here is actually like suitable controller since we are thinking about mobile robot we have to think about design of navigation system and other performances as well for adjusting that so on top of that some of the task will associate with prediction so then for example i don't know certain parameter can i predict it in a, in a simple sense probably my mobile robot is going on top of that some mass is fall down so can i actually like measure how much the mass i carry so i can predict right based on my motion change i can actually like predict or estimate 
So then if you see this way, the mathematical model can be used for understanding the system to design suitable controller and mechanical system and navigational system. On top of that, you can predict or estimate some kind of system parameter. If that is the case, what we are thinking next, so we are thinking about the important aspect, what we call degree of freedom. Just to give a broad or a broad picture in general, you imagine, so I'm actually like Shantakumar and you are actually looking at me also in a video. So now imagine somehow your colleague, tomorrow you are going to meet, your colleague know some of the IIT Palakkad faculty members. So you want to actually like, somehow you forget my name, but you want to actually like check with your colleague that this guy is knowing me or not. So for that, what you will start, you will start describing about me. So probably you will try to describe about me with a set of probably commands. Probably you say that he's actually like short in height, probably long hair, probably today it is not long hair. Uh, then you can say he's actually like probably brown in color. Uh, indirectly, you can say the color complex is probably not there. And you can say that he's actually like having so and so things you will be adding. So now based on this description, the other side of the guy, if he's able to understand and uh, identify me, that is what you call, you can say achievement. Now in that connection, so what you are trying to do, you are trying to describe me with what minimum number of instructions or probably information. So that's what we are actually seeing in terms of system. For example, I want to describe the robotic system. So how many minimum number of variable I required to describe. So that is what we are actually bringing as degree of freedom. So number of minimum number, sorry, the typo was there. So minimum number of variable to describe the system is the right definition or some people call independent variable to describe the system, number of independent variables. So this way also you can see, for example, now I am thinking about motion of my duster, which is fitted in a steel board and my duster is magnetic duster. I want to describe the duster, how many variable I require. So I assume that the duster is a body. So the body is having a rotation about the board board vertical axis which is coming outward or inward on top of that the you can say translation in x and y axis are there so now if i see that way so at least you can see that the three is the minimum number right to describe the position of the board oh, sorry position of the uh, you call duster with respect to the board at least there are three so further in order to understand more clarity on the you call the kinematics i just add something for example, I already told for describing me, you might have said, I'm actually like short in height, long hair, probably uh, dark in color and all. But the same dark may not apply in Africa, right? Similarly, the same uh, short may not be applicable in probably Mongolian countries. So then what happened, the description, what we are giving also with respect to something. So that is what we call reference system. So unfortunately, the robotic system is actually like mostly like you call state variable base, which is nothing but position, velocity, these kind of things. So we need a coordinate system. So we are going to use a, a standard coordinate system, which we call the Cartesian coordinate system. So then it is three mutually perpendicular axis. If I say the description of the body in space, it requires three translation associated with the three mutually perpendicular axis and rotation about three mutually perpendicular axis. So three plus three, six. So that is what we are actually thinking. So in that sense, the land-based vehicle, which is playing in a plane, so it required three degrees of freedom. So which see, which says two translation and one orientation. If it is actually like space, then it is actually like aerial and space vehicle or underwater vehicle. It required six, which is three translation and three orientation. I hope you understood what is degrees of freedom. It is different from the actuation, number of actuation or number of control. Even you take a mobile robot or probably a spatial manipulator the degree of freedom in space it is six in plane it is three probably the manipulator industrial manipulator can have seven joints which are seven active joints then it is not supposed to be called seven view of system because most of us would be wrongly considered that's what i want to mention here so now we'll come back with the same board uh, with the duster i assume that this black sorry this uh, white screen consider as a steel board and this you call blue uh, box consider as a magnetic duster. Now imagine this magnetic duster need to be described with respect to both. So obviously describing with respect to both supposed to be having some reference system. So
So one simply we can put it that one frame I put it I that is having a Cartesian system since it's in the plane x i y i are the axis. Now I did with the reference. But with respect to this reference, can I define the mobile robot? No. Why? Because the mobile robot is a body. At least in this case, it's a box. The box is having several points. So in order to make it more understanding, what I'm bringing, I'm bringing additional point that to associated with the frame. Now there is an additional point which is having a B, and that B is having a frame which is X B Y B in this case. Now you can see that there are two. You can say frames are coming. Indirectly, this frame can associate set of variables, and this frame also can be associate set of variables. Now, in robot or robot kinematics, what we call, which is actually like nothing but mapping one frame to another frame. That's all. So we are not going to talk much more in detail. So what kinematics means? We are mapping one frame to another frame. Since we are actually like talking in terms of physics. The mathematician come into a picture. Set of variable associated with B, we call B space variable. Set of variable associated with the I that we call set of variable with respect to I, we call I space variable. Now I call this is one space set of variable. This is another space. Now mapping between these two spaces, what we mean to say mapping? That mapping can be done with some kind of transformation. The transformation usually it is based on set of variables, so it's supposed to be a multi-dimensional set of variables. This is probably a vector, so then multi-dimensional vector what we call matrix. So now that is what we call transformation matrix. So that is what you also would have studied in your manipulator, which is what kinematics. So with that addition, what I am trying to see here, this B point I need to define with respect to I. So it can be done with X is the translation in X axis, Y is the translation in Y axis, and Psi is the rotation about Z I axis. Now I can actually see that these are the three generalized coordinate. This can be generalized, right? So now these are the three generalized coordinate. But what the difficulty will come in mobile robot, which is really a big task. What the bigger crime? The mobile robot is a body which is having probably set of wheels because we are talking about wheeled mobile robot. The wheels will generate a velocity rather than position. The wheel velocity will generate probably longitudinal velocity, lateral velocity, and angular velocity about the body frame, which is at instant. Okay, please be clear. This U V R are the longitudinal, lateral, and angular velocity of the vehicle with respect to body frame at instant. So in that sense, what we know is actually like with respect to B space, we have U V R, which is nothing but velocity space. But what we wanted is actually like the coordinate system, which is we call generalized coordinate system, x y psi in I space. But you can see it is actually like mismatching the unit. So then, what we need to think, one can uplift or one can come down. So coming down is not possible because I already said the U V R is actually like at instantaneous time. Because at any point you can say that the body velocity with respect to body cannot be defined. So what we assume the body frame is at frozen at particular instant, and we realize in that sense bringing back to position is not possible. Then what we can think about we can actually like uplift the generalized coordinate as the time derivative of generalized coordinate. So then what we are thinking about dx by dt, dy by dt, d psi by dt, which we simply call x dot, y dot, and psi dot. So in order to get that, what we are having relation, we have already U V R, which is probably known because once you take the mobile and you have connect the wheel, the wheel velocity we can get it based on that you can think about U V R coming into picture. Now we assume that the U V R, what we call command velocity, which are known. Then what we wanted, we wanted x dot, y dot, and psi dot. For that, what we are thinking about, we are taking this U out, and since it is in x b axis. Can I actually like probably get the information of U with respect to I? Yes, definitely we can do. If we recall our mathematics, what we call projection of vector with respect to coordinate system. So now, what coordinate we have? I coordinate we have. I assume that virtually this frame I brought here, I project. So for projection of you can say vectors, we can use law of cosines. So I assume that this is actually like psi angle. What happened if I project the U with respect to x i? Axis it would be u cos psi, right? Then in the same way, if I project on y i axis, it would be u sin psi. The same way I can uh, project v also in terms of you can say x i y i axis. These are the two, right? 
So unfortunately or fortunately, the R and side are supposed to be same. Why? Because the Z axis is not getting affected or no trans, you can say no transformation happened with respect to that. So if that is the case, <coughs> sorry, uh, straight away we can write psi dot is r. But what we wanted here is x dot. So x dot, if I want, what we can see that along the xi axis, there are two velocities are coming, right? So I need to do the vector addition of u cos psi and u b sin psi. Similarly, when I want y dot, I need to do the vector addition. That's what I'm doing in the next slide, where I'm putting u cos psi and b sin psi as a vector addition, which is going to give as x dot. Similarly, I put u sin psi and b cos psi, I put in terms of vector addition, I get y dot. Now it is actually like very clear, right? So now if I do this, what I will get x dot, y dot, psi dot in a vector form, which is what we call, uh, you can say, vector of uh, derivative of generalized coordinate. So, but what we are getting the other side vector, but it is consists of u, v, r, which is what we call command velocity. But this can be, I already said, I want to have a space. One is actually like I space, the other one is B space. So for that, what I want, I need a mapping. I just make it this in a matrix and vector form. I already said this is vector, this is multidimensional vector, which is what we call matrix. Now this is what we obtain. This is in vector. You can say velocity domain, this particular matrix, it is still, it is transformation matrix, but it is happening, we call velocity domain, people call it Jacobian. Why it is have come? So this is actually like came from one of the mathematician come physics, we call Jacobi, he has given for vector differentiation with respect to another vector cannot be done straight forward. We have to do it partial differentiation and then multiply with that. What we got it, it can become as one matrix that is what we call transformation matrix in order to appreciate its effort we call jacobi so this is nothing but jacobian so that is what we are bringing it this j is jacobian matrix and this is what we call generalized time derivative of coordinates which is eta dot and this is what i call you call zeta so now this is very clear right you have mapped this is what we call kinematics so now if i know this uvr i can find x dot y dot psi dot with the help of initial psi if I know x dot, y dot, psi dot with the initial displacement psi, then I can find uvr by inverting this. So this is what we are calling as what you call the kinematics in terms of mobile robot. So one is state forward where you are getting a state forward relation where eta dot can be obtained by the input command velocity, which is nothing but zeta provided the psi at the point or at instant t equal to zero is known, then we can get it, which is what we call forward differential kinematics. This is state forward, that's what it's forward. But what it gives, it is something like you fabricate your mobile robot, connect a wheel, connect your motor, give some velocity. What you can see, how the robot moving, right? So this is what we call analyzing the system in real time. But if it is in a computational, we call simulating the system. So that's what the case, but what we are calling here, it is at velocity level. But the same way we do it, the other cases, where the eta dot is defined indirectly, I need to go this particular time, this particular velocity, this particular location. Indirectly, I defined everything in my output. So then what happened, I need to see what would be my input command velocity to fulfill that. So very straightforward, you invert this. So you are having inverse, so it is inverse differential kinematics. So now eta dot is known and you are trying to find out zeta. So now what we are trying to do, we are trying to see that every instant that robot is following certain desired way, which is nothing but controlling, right? So that's what we are thinking about controlling the system in velocity level. So this is what the mobile robot kinematics. So two things, okay. One is actually like forward differential where your input command velocity is known. The other case, you are defining your desired velocity and displacement. That is what, are you clear? And addition that the inverse differential kinematics cannot be applied as a control until the psi not and psi decide not are same and your profile is supposed to be at least C2 differentiable. What that means? You should have a desired velocity, then only you can use inverse differential kinematics as a you call closed loop system. Okay. So obviously we need to think about a feedback control later on. So if that is the continuation, one big deal has come. Sir, you did not... Excuse sorry. me. Uh, sorry for interruption, uh, Shantakumar. We are exceeding the time now. 
Okay. Uh, should I stop? Then I can do it. That's not a problem. I don't know. You can uh, quickly run through the slides. Uh, and it will we'll take another five minutes. Uh, then I have to jump into probably motion control. Then I will just do it. Okay. Okay. Fine. Thank you. So probably what we are thinking about. So we are thinking about the mobility. Uh, we are thinking about wheel. So where is the wheel? So the wheel configuration never has come, right? So in order to understand that, we are thinking about the maneuverability. Maneuverability is actually like coming based on number of wheels or based on the configuration. So now you imagine you have a car. So what you are getting, the car can be actually like maneuver in two ways. So you can actually steer the front wheel and as well as you can provide the power to the front wheel. So indirectly what you are providing, you are providing the longitudinal motion to the wheel and as well as you are actually like giving the, you call rotational moment indirect mode which is what we call steerability. When you think about degree of maneuverability, it is just the sum of these two. So that is what I mean to say. One is directly giving as a wheel velocity and the other one is indirectly you are trying to manipulate by changing the steering configuration. So if that is the case, what happened? The total number of controllable inputs, how many motors you have or how many power wheel you have, that is what degree of maneuverability. So this is actually purely depend on how you are configure your mobile robot and what are the actual actuator arrangement. In order to understand that, I just give an idea. This is what we come across as a wheel. You can say this is a generalized uh, kinematic model. If you think about wheel, so this zeta, it will come with another subspace, which is wheel angular velocity. So now you can see that there is another mapping matrix, which is we call W, which is input actuator matrix. Now, based on this W nature, so we will get either the system is non-holonomic or holonomic. What that means, the rank of W is actually like less than three, then it cannot achieve all three state which we want to have X, Y, side. But if the rank is three, then we can achieve all three state. That's what we call a holonomic and omnidirectional or you call non-holonomic system, okay? So W is actually like a less than rank of three, that is what we call non-holonomic. If the rank is three, then it is holonomic or simply we call omnidirectional robot. So with that, uh, what we want to think about, we need to think about what kind of wheel we have. So there are two kinds of wheel. One is solid wheel, whereas there is no pneumatic in picture, then it is solid wheel. The other one is where we have pneumatic air or probably something is inflated, then it is inflated wheel. If these two are there, there is subclass, which is we call conventional wheel, where pure rolling only exerted, there is no lateral motion. Indirectly infinite resistant on the lateral direction. If this is the case, there are will come one is fixed wheel the other one is called steerable or rotatable wheel the same way we think about non-conventional wheel so if we want to allow the lateral motion what we need to do so there is no straightforward answer then people thought about one Swedish company they brought it Sweden company brought it kind of passive roller introduction then we call it's a non-conventional or Swedish wheel so this for this wheel have two kind of configuration one is having the passive roller perpendicular to the axis of rotation, the other one is inclined. So now this is one we call omni wheel, this is what we call magnum wheel. So these two will provide the lateral motion, but what additional benefit we have, this will provide lateral motion, but the problem is it cannot be applied in the outdoor environment due to the, you call the rough surface and the mud surface. So this is what the subclassification. So based on that, I already said, if your W matrix, which is rank of two, or less than two, which come under it is non-holonomic. For example, you have only angular velocity of omega one and omega two, the W matrix can be three cross two, maximum rank is two, then it is having a lack, that is what we call non-holonomic. But when you compare the holonomic nature, in this case, it's a four magnum wheel, it is having W matrix is just three cross four, where four inputs are there. So the rank can be assured by three, then it is omnidirectional or you call holonomic robot. So this is what the definition and if you see in the outdoor, there are several modes. So one is actually like you can see a differential wheel where you have two powered wheel with one caster and two caster with two, you can say independent power wheel. And this is what all four wheel powered, which we call skid. And these all four powered, but all four steerable as well. So this is actually like eight input. This is four, but it can be still, it is still, it is actually like non-holonomic, but this is completely holonomic or omnidirectional. If that is the case, I just uh, run, run through this. Probably I will just talk about this. So when we think about mobile robot, one bigger challenge will come because of the motion. So the motion will end up with two kind of, you can say headache. 
one is you need to think about optimal path but the other one is collision free path the collision free path will be end up with the two kind of thing one is obstacle which is you call the static and dynamic obstacle the other one is actually like hurdle will come whether you have a restricted motion or you have complete motion if i continue that way what happen there are several sub classification will come i just run through this so i just come back to the motion control so there would be three major things which we need to think about one is point and point to point motion which is nothing but you have a start and end point you want to follow it but the other one which is very simple uh, which is we used to do it in very uh, often in our real time which is path following for example you take a road so nobody is actually defining this particular instant you need to go this particular location you just give, give a path which is defined and you have to follow the similar way the robot supposed to follow a path the path is actually no time dependent but if it is actually like time dependent then we call it as a trajectory so then the trajectory tracking is coming so these all are actually like one sub cases but what happened when you think about the other side so you need to think about the reaction base for example you are making a robot which need to play a robotic soccer event so then the robot need not to follow only trajectory or path or point to point motion it need to follow the target tracking as well indirectly it's supposed to react so where the ball if the ball cross then it has to rotate all those aspect so then that case the reactive mode comes then you can see that there are actually like several sub cases can come so you might have planned a path that planned the path nothing has come initially but suddenly you are detecting obstacle or you go ahead there is unknown obstacle has come then you have to make a new execution right so it's supposed to be a reaction mode the similar way in order to follow a line instead of following the line you can just think about a side looking camera side looking sonar you just to follow a wall so now any interruption happens still you go back and follow it which is again a reaction based the other one which i already told the soccer robot need to follow a ball which is need to be a very good example for target tracking so these are all actually like there so then we can think about one simple aspect so the mobile robot is not only a mechanical consists of mechanical parts it is having a controller part which is going to influence a lot of things so then when we think about this way the control is one of the bigger picture on top of that the robot also having a difficulty like other mechanical engineering applications like we cannot obtain the dynamic model very simple example i will say the friction you cannot model accurately on top of that the external distance and the parameter variation initially you planned a link which is supposed to be 10 meter length or oh, sorry 10 cm length but manufacturer defect is there somewhere so then there would be uncertain right so like that so there are several attempts supposed to make the conventional controller cannot be done there is supposed to be a advanced controller required so in that sense people are working on non linear and intelligent control scheme that is what the current focus so if that is the case i will just put forward one of the challenge which come across in robotics so we all know like science is the one of the biggest channel people everyone think about publishing in that but in that direction if you see we are all roboticians right so in that sense we cannot publish in science all the time so people thought in probably 2018 and they started the same science people started a subsection called science robotics in order to felicitate that uh, science robotic issue people come around 32 uh, 34 international researcher jointly came and give top biggest challenge in robotics so which actually like put forward and since the time is actually like very much limited i'll just go across from this so there are several challenges come across but what i feel there are two contract objectives coming in the future which is what we call future robotics one is actually like in the industrial environment the other one is in the domestic which i mentioned in the first slide where broad theme the same thing i put a contract objective what that mean one supposed to replace the human labor in the industry or felicitate the human labor in the industry the other one supposed to be companion for the human being which is required so now you can see that there are two contracts here it should be more like a program but here it's more on intelligent and sensing so now you can see the picture which i always admire one is actually like you can see both are anthropomorphic robots but almost same configuration but you can see that this is actually like doing a routine task but it is doing a complex task where this girl is actually like playing with this robot a, a chess game and it is thinking and doing what the human being used to do it it's very complex right so if in that case i end with my slide with this so where the robot evolved in this way 
So where 70s, 80s, the manipulators were actually like leading the role. And what happened, it's all in the fixed base. But people still in industry, they want to have a mobile base. So the mobile base is very complex. People cannot apply that. So then what happened, they put the wheel. But what happened, the mobile base, which is actually like due to the stability aspect, they just put the base alone that will go up and down rather than bending. Then people thought about why can't we provide some kind of bending with the arm. So then it slowly came across. Then we have some kind of stability. Then we brought, and you can see the evaluation happened, evolution happened. Then people come with some kind of bipedal robot, where you can see that it's very stable, where one foot is rigidly fixed, and the next foot motion is happened. Then the upper body also changed. Then you can see still the same nature, where one foot is straight, and then it is doing it. It is what we call, uh, you can say, sequence motion. But what we are looking forward is actually like a dynamic walking or you can see stable walking. You can see that both the foot are actually like in air. You can see the contact is actually like here, actually like going to disconnect and it is going to make. So if we able to succeed this, this is actually like good. At least from my knowledge, we are actually like reaching this. In fact, this is not completely achieved. With that, I'm just to thank you for listening this song. Like, uh, uh, ready to take up the question before I, I wanted to show a few of our fabricated prototype. Somehow I could not actually show, but what I want to show here actually three of the commercial products which are available in our lab or in association with my lab, which is all mobile manipulator, which is what I started my career as a BTEC student. When I was in 2001, uh, my supervisor is Professor R. Marapan, which is most of you might be knowing. He worked in GCE Salem. And then he worked in several of colleges. Right now he retired and worked. But when I was in second to third year, the you call fifth semester, I met him and he gave an idea. So that time everyone was actually like admire about the uh, lunar exploration where there would be a robot, which is Sorger, which should be launched. So that time my professor also interested and he asked us to fabricate a mobile manipulator and then can be achieved. So we achieved with a uh, little bit of success. In fact, the mechanical component, we made it proper. And the sensing part, uh, that time we were not succeeded, but uh, still be able to show in an unknown uh, room, it can go and sense the object and it can pick. With the five degree of freedom manipulator arm and three degrees of freedom mobile base, that's what we made. So in that sense, so around uh, 19 to 20 years, I'm working in this area. With that, I stop this uh, presentation and you please uh, start the you call moderator can open the questions. Thank you. Once again. Uh, thank you, sir. It's really a uh, great session uh, because uh, yeah, it will give you some insight into uh, that uh, uh, content what you have presented. So let me share some of the questions to you. Uh, the sure, first, sure. Question, yeah, first question is, are exoskeletons considered in the category of autonomous robots? How are these classified? Is the first question to you. Yeah, so exoskeleton is still not considered as autonomous. Uh, if this exoskeleton is autonomous, it is we call anthropomorphic robot or probably a humanoid. Uh, if it is exoskeleton is autonomous, we come uh, this into a medical robot is category where we call assistive robots. So where the assistive robot, there are broad category where active exoskeleton, passive exoskeleton, and uh, rehabilitation robot, all those cases. So the exoskeleton come under assistive robot. So assistive robot can be have autonomy, but it is not under autonomous mobile robot as such. <coughs> I hope you, you can get it answered. Yeah, yeah. And you can ask next question. Yeah, uh, I'll go for the next question. Isn't, sure, sure. Uh, isn't it uh, navigation same as path planning? Uh, could uh, you explain uh, you this? Because we have put in separate boxes, right? So they're yes, asking yes. why they are uh, different or can't be same. Yeah. That's what the question is. Yeah. Yeah, so I will answer. So navigation is very broad. So navigation will have three cases or three sub themes. One is localization, at least in terms of mobile robot. So then path planning and uh, this navigation, which is actually like the third block, which is map building or map generation. So based on the localization and map, so we will able to get the path. So that the path can be further emphasized that is come under motion planning. But the path, what we are going to get out of this what we call navigation. The navigation is not only path generation, it would be giving localization as well. So where the robot that is actually like supposed to be and where are the obstacles that also need to be there. 
so apart from that you give a path or not that is secondary but if that is the case so the navigation is actually like uh, super you can say superior than the you call path planning the path planning is a subset of navigation that's what the idea so in fact the gnc what we shortly call for robotics so guidance navigation and control that is what so in fact some people simply call gn because the guidance will part of you call the motion will come and the navigation will take a path of control part of control so but uh, as like people in mobile robot we call gnc so we will not call g path planning control you got it right because localization is one of the big issue at least in mobile Sorry. robot yeah we'll go for the next question then uh, sure. what yeah what algorithm will be used for mobile robots so it is actually like not specific so it is actually like quite open for example if i am doing a mobile robot which supposed to be done within my probably lab environment then the programming uh, probably different algorithm would be different but what i wanted that actually like define the algorithm or the pseudo code for example i want to go a path following that to like a collision free path that to online collision free then the algorithm is different if it is actually like offline then i need to follow the motion then the algorithm is different like that it is no specific need probably the computer science people uh, might be coming away oh, okay i have a algorithm which is a star or probably i have something which is reinforcement based uh, breadth search something like that okay this is what the algorithm i supposed to use no not like that it is purely depends for example if you think about a conventional cycle the algorithm is totally different you sense your odometer reading you sense your imu reading and make your localization and you see what is your desired and keep going which is we call relative positioning base so they are actually you no need to even bother about the obstacle right so that kind of thing yeah that's uh, the last question for you uh, sure. what may be the challenges involving in computational aspects in develop in the development of flexible manip manipulator based mobile robot Uh, there are several challenges you see flexible uh, if you talk about flexibility so the theory is not readily available that's why we are still going with the conventional solid uh, you call rigid body mechanics so if you have a enough theory on flexible body you can go second thing is the flexible body we can consider as multi number or consider multi body system still the theory is not properly evolved if i consider probably one uh, you call pneumatic actuated body as my you call link now i assume that it is probably set of five body so earlier i consider one body my computational aspect is low now if i consider five body that too i need to solve the boundary conditions of five body so earlier it is a conventional system which is having a deterministic and as well as it is a continuous system as i said which will give a ordinary differential equation when i bring the flexibility the ordinary differential equation become a partial differential equation so although i'll be solving boundary condition but the ordinary differential condition boundary condition only initial condition which is very easy the numerical integration i can do at any point of time but when come into a partial differential equation the solver is not easy as ordinary differential equation this itself is giving a small idea right how computationally complex on top of that whether your solver is stable all aspect will come when you are thinking about implementation so that's why you see certain level of flexibility only we gave and even we give flexibility you can see that the control most likely open rather than autonomous although you call autonomous for example snake robot that has a several of predefined task which would be there so now in that sense the computational aspect keep going so instead of microprocessor or microcontroller it's supposed to be on board pc even if you go a computational algorithm further the on board pc is supposed to be a dedicated you call pc even some cases it's supposed to be a gpu kind of thing that's what the cases i hope you could able to see that right yeah yeah thank you dr shantak kumar uh, for answering all the questions now over to dr sundaran sir to propose the vote thanks sir please uh, dear participants greetings to all this is dr sundar rajan from department of mechanical engineering it's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks on this online webinar session i on behalf of the department of mechanical engineering extend a very hearty vote of thanks to the participants who blessed us with their presence and took out valuable time i must mention our deep sense of appreciation to dr shandukumar mogan 
Associate Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, IIT Palakkad, for his wonderful and valuable presentation on wheeled mobile robots. Very thank you, sir. I also wish to express my gratitude to our management, General Manager Development, AGM, and Principal for providing us an opportunity to organize this kind of the webinar session with encouragement and support. I heartily congratulate to all the participants for their active participation in this live webinar session. As no program can become successful with a single person, so I extend my big thanks to our Department of Mechanical Engineering for their support and contributions. Thank you all. The feedback link already shared with the uh, participants, and also there is a small assessment which may which is also, uh, actually included for enlighten uh, your knowledge. Uh, don't uh, consider this as in the writer sense uh, and take it in a positive direction. Thank you all.